Again, welcome back to Java programming course. This is unit two, lecture number one. So this lecture is we are going to learn how to solve a practical problem using Java language, uh, such as uh, finding the error of a circle or finding the gross pay of an employee. If we know the employee hourly rate and also the number of hours he work. So in our previous program, we learned how to create compile and also run a Java program. And our program only print a statement or a string in, again, a console application, just to print a statement. Now, starting from these lectures, we are going to learn how to solve a practical problems. And again, through these problems, we will learn what is a, a variable, what is a Java primitive data type, what is assignment operator, and also the arithmetic expressions and also operators. So our main objective here is to write Java programs to perform a simple computations. Also to obtain an input from a console using the scanner class. Now we can use the scanner class to get an input from a keyboard. Or if we have a file that have a data, we can use also use the scanner class to get an input from a file. So we start with a first problem here. We are going to compute the area of a circle. Now we know in mathematics to find the area of a circle is the radius times radius times the power, which means it's a power R squared. R is the radius. Now we know a power is a constant value, 3.142. So we need an input of the radius. So if we can get an input of a radius, then we can be able to find the area. And now in this program, we are going to do input, process, and output in sequential order. So as we said in our previous lectures, every Java program must have a main class. So our main class name is compute area. So that means the file name will be compute area.java. Then inside our main class, we have our main method where the execution starts from. So we need an input and the input, we need to store this data somewhere. In programming, we always declare our variable. So our variable is a memory location where we can store data. Now to declare variable, we start with the data type of the variable. The data type of the variable tell us the type of data we are going to store in the variable. So here we have double. In Java, double means we can store decimal values. We also have a second variable, which is area. The name is area. Also, we can store decimal values, it's double. Now, how do we, uh, the system allocate the memory for us? Uh, that's not our issue. The operating system, we take care of that for us. So our goal here is to declare our variables whereby we are not going to make any syntax error. Uh, when you declare variables, so you have to end the statement with semicolon. So we declare first variable radius. This is where our input radius will go to. Then we have area. This is where we are going to store our result area. So we have two ways of getting an input. Either we use the scanner class to ask the user to enter the input, or in this case, we use the assignment operator. So assignment operator here means we are assigning the value 20 to the variable on, on our left side, which is the radius. So we assign 20 to radius. So now we know the value of the radius. So to compute the area is radius times radius times 3.14159. It's radius square. So it's radius times radius. Now in the future, in the future, we are going to learn how to use the math class whereby we can use the power function or the power value constant, etc. So for now, we get our input, which is the radius. We assign 20. Then we do our process, which is to find the area of the circle. We use the formula per R square. Then the last section is to display our results. So we use the system.out.println. And here we say the area for the circle of radius is radius. Now we say we can use the plus in chapter one. We said the plus, we use it either to join a string with a value or to join two strings. 
But when we have two values on the left and right side, the plus will add the two values. Here on our left side, we have a string. So the right side, whether it's a value or a string, we are going to join it. So we join the string to the value in the radius. Then we have a string again, S, and we join the area, the answer from the formula. So we are going to display the result here. Now let's see the animation for this. So I will start the animation. Again, execution starts from the main function or the main method. Now we declare our first variable name radius. We can be able to store decimal values because the data type is double. We have an area also. Next, we assign 20 to the radius. Then we are going to compute. So here they say we should note that in all code animation, you can use the mouse figure to move highlight, explanation, output, and check your understanding boss freely. If radius is misspelled as radius, is this correct? Yes or no? And uh, this is not correct. So it's no. The reason why, because again, Java is case sensitive. So uppercase and lowercase are not the same. So next we do our calculations. We multiply 20 times 20 times 3.1459. will give us 1256.636. Next, we are going to display the result. So we use the system.r.println to display the result, the area for the circle of radius. 20.0 is the content of the variable area, 1256.636. So what we did again, that's the steps here. First, again, we declare our variable radius. We also declare variable name area. Then we assign 20 to the radius. Then we do our computation, 20 times 20 times 3.1459. The result will be 1256.636. Then from there, we display our total result. The area for the circle of radius, 20 is whatever value we have here, 1, 2, 5, 6, 6, 3, 6. Now next is how do we get, so we use the assignment operator to get the radius. And that value will always be the same value unless we change it. Now, another option is that we can use the scanner class. We call the, the this scanner class is in the package called a utility, Java utility package. So what this scanner class does is that it allow us, if we use system.in as the argument, it will allow us to get the input from the keyboard. So this means we are going to type the input after we, when we run the program. So in order to do that, first we need to create a scanner object. So we have scanner, the object name can be any name as far as it's followed the regulations of naming uh, identifiers in Java. So we have scanner input equal to new scanner system.in. Now, depending on the data type of the variable, we may use nest int or nest double. Nest double means the data type again is a decimal value or a double or float. Then nest int means it's a whole number. So this is an example here. We have system .a .print. We This is an instruction. We ask the user to enter a double value, which means to enter a decimal value. So first of all, we create our scanner object, which is scanner class. The object name is input equal to new scanner system.in. Then since the data type is double, which we can see here, D variable double, we use the nest double. So first we start with the scanner object that we created input dot nest double. So this will allow us to get an input from a keyboard because we are using system.in. So let's look the example here. So we can see the first thing we do is to import the scanner class in order to use it. For example, if we want to use a system.out.print, we don't need to import any package because by default, the java.lang, we have a package called java.lang 
L-A-N-G, or language. And that package have this system data dot printer learn method, etc. So we don't need to import it. But with scanner, we scanner is inside a utility package. So we import java.util.scanner. Then we have our main method, a main class again. So this main class is compute area with console input. So the file name will be compute area with console input.java. Then we have our main method where the execution will start from. So the first thing we do is to create our scanner object. The scanner object, we name it input. The next step, we ask the user to enter the number for radius. It's very important to ask the user, this is an instruction, because if we don't have this instruction, when you run the program, you will see that the cursor will be blinking on the console, the blast screen, blinking, so you don't know what to do, what number to enter, whether letters, uh, values, symbols, you don't know. So here, when we run the program, it will say enter a number for the radio. So we know what we have to enter. So here we enter a decimal value. So we use the input dot next double. We assign it to the variable where we want to store it. Here we want to store the result in a variable name radius. The data type is double. So when we get the radius now, we can find the area. So the area will be Radius times radius times 3.14159. After that, we display our result. Now, the difference between the previous question and this question is that anytime we run this program, we can enter a new value for the radius because we are using the scanner class with the system.in. That means we get the input from a keyboard. In our previous question, we used the assignment operator and we assign 20 to the radius. So if we run this program 10 times, five times, always the variable uh, for the radius will be 20, unless we change it. But with this using the scanner class, every time we run the program, it will access for the radius, the new value for radius. So next also we have compute average. And the same concept here again, we create a scanner object. And this time we are using this. The reason why we are going through this example is that we can also have one scanner object and we can use it as many as we want. For example, in this case, we want three inputs. So we create our scanner object input and we use input.nest double another input dot next double, another input dot next double. So this means we're going to get three decimal values. These three values will be stored in three variables here. And the type also is double decimal. So num one, num two, num three. Now, same as previously, since we are using the scanner class, we have to import our scanner class uh, package, which is the java.util. Then we have our main class name, compute average. Then the main method where the execution starts. We create our scanner object and we use the scanner object to get three inputs into three different um, variables, number one, number two, number three. Then to find the average, we had number one plus number two plus number three divided by three. And the answer will be in a variable name average. And the last step is to display the result. So here we say the average of number one and number two and number three is average, whatever the content is. So let's try the animation. Again, execution start from the main function. So we create our scanner object and we use it. We ask the user to enter a value. And we have the user to enter another value. And the last value. So now we have three values, num one, num two, num three. And so when I click next, we are going to find the average. Here they are telling us, know that in all code animation, you can use mouse figure, to move highlight, explanation, output, and check. Now you understand the boss freely. 
If average is misspelled as average in this line, what line will have a compile error? Well, if average was spelled wrong, then here we have average. So that means line 15. Uh, here they say it's wrong because maybe we didn't get the question right. Maybe they mean after line 15. Uh, so if that is the case, it will be line 19 again. So here we display our results for the average and then we print it on the screen. So next also, we should know what is implicit import and explicit import. For example, when we import a java.util and asterisk, this means we are importing everything in the, all the classes, everything in the utility package. And this is called the implicit import, import everything. You use the asterisk means any classes in the utility package, you can use it. Or we can do explicit import, which means we import one class at a time. So here, java.util.scanner, it means I'm importing all the scanner from my utility package into the program. Now, is there any performance difference? No, there's no performance difference. But again, if you are using more than one class from utility package, then it's good to import everything instead of importing them individually. So that will be the conclusion of these lectures. And again, thank you for your time. See you in the next lectures.